Larry Souter, and welcome to Stories of Amazing Grace. We're coming to you from Victory Chapel at the Madison Church of Christ in Madison, Tennessee. Glad that you're with us. Glad that you're joining us on YouTube. By the way, last month we had Con Hamlet here, and I posted the video on YouTube last Thursday, and we've had uh, 600 hits so far. So 100 hits a day, and it's still going. So I appreciate any uh, publicity you can give for these stories of Amazing Grace. It seems to be working on YouTube. No matter what our struggles, God is with us. We always like to begin with the scripture from Romans 8, 38 through 39. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Tonight is a musical night. We have two separate interviews. The Joy Boy is representing gospel music, and William Gooch is here representing contemporary Christian music. But we have no one here representing bagpipes. <laughs> so, I have a story about bagpipes to start us. It goes like this. As a bagpiper, I play many gigs. Recently, I was asked by a funeral director to play at a graveside service for a homeless man. He had no family or friends, so the service was to be at the Pauper Cemetery in Nova Scotia, outback country. As I was not familiar with the backwoods, I got lost, and being a typical man, I did not stop for directions. I finally arrived an hour late and saw the funeral guy had evidently gone, and the hearse was nowhere in sight. There were only diggers and crew left, and they were eating lunch. I felt badly and apologized to the men for being late. I went to the side of the grave and looked down, and the vault lid was already in place. I didn't know what else to do, so I started to play. The workers put down their lunches and began to gather around. I played out my heart and soul for this man with no family and friends. I played like I'd never played before for this homeless man. As I played Amazing Grace, the workers began to weep. They wept. I wept. We all wept together. When I finished, I packed up my bagpipes and started for the car. Though my head was hung low, my heart was full. As I opened the door to my car, I heard one of the workers say, I've never seen anything like that before, and I've been putting in septic tanks for 20 years. <laughs> well, let's introduce the Joy Boys. Our brothers. Not only are they gospel singers, they are brothers. So ladies, why don't you come over here with me? We're going to stand up here. And let's welcome everybody, Donnie and Daryl. Here they are. There is no feeling like being on that stage performing in front of hundreds of people and they're enjoying you. That's a rush that just cannot be explained. I love being on the stage and giving 100%. From the time that I hit the stage, until the time that we leave. So this is where it all started, right here at St. Mark Missionary Baptist Church. How many years ago? 35 years ago. It was ago. 35 years ago. This is where we rehearsed. This is where our, our very first concert was. You know, our mother, she was the very first one that introduced, back then we were the joys of Nashville. Sure. One night, our mother, she took us to the concert, set us on the front row, and we saw our very first concert. And as they say, the rest is- History. The rest is history. But this is where it started, 35 years ago, out of this house to this church, and the rest all over the world. So, our humble beginnings, humble. Well, I guess this is it. Yeah, this is it. Let's go ahead and just give them what they finally been waiting on. You ready? Let's go. Here we come. Your blessing. Your blessing. Is it your blessing? God's children are, are peculiar people. He 
Is that right? He said, all of God's children are peculiar people. Well, I need to ask you something. Is there any peculiar people in this building? If you're a peculiar person, make some noise just as loud as you can so the Lord in hell. Ladies and gentlemen, the Joy Boys. Wow. Thank you for being with us. 35 years. 35 years. You've been in the concerts, performances. This started when? 19... 1982. And this is Donnie Frierson and Daryl. Friars and yes. brothers, not yes. twins, but brothers. Yes. Mm -hmm. They want to know, the first question is, how tall are they? Four foot six and four foot six and just a little bit more. <laughs> four <laughs> nine and that much. <laughs> and uh, who beat up who as you were growing up? Well, I would always win, but I would always get the whippings for winning. It's like, I was like, Mom, but he hit me first. Why are you whooping me? So, gotcha. that's it. <laughs> Let's take a look at some photos at, uh, from your career. Uh, Bobby Jones Gospel? Yeah, this was our very first television uh, uh, appearance on BET. It was uh, nationally. Uh, and it was uh, shown all over the country. Uh, the Bobby Jones Gospel Show, and we give honor, we give praise to Dr. Jones for, for inviting us there. All right. Let's see a few more of these. We'll click through these fairly, fairly quickly. This is another Bobby Jones. Yes, this is the last one that we uh, taped last year, August of last year, which aired twice this year. Uh, and you were with days. Jesse Jackson? Yeah, we were, where were we when we were with Jesse Jackson? We were Jackson. in Charleston, uh, West, Charleston, West Virginia. Yeah, and incidentally, I think we we came up. Um, it was on a on a got on a music festival, and we came up a couple of acts just before for before Willie Nelson. So it was like, hi Willie. All right. <laughs> next, what do we got next, Will? There's some more famous folk. Yeah, who, this, who is this? This is Thomas Spann. He's uh, the lead singer for the. Uh, a well-known group, uh, the Brooklyn All-Stars, out of Brooklyn, Brooklyn, New York, and he is how old is Tommy? He is 90 years old. He's the oldest quartet singer still traveling and singing. Well, yes. mm -hmm. Then we have Donnie and Daryl, nice yeah. handsome shot, and uh, a shot on stage. Here you go, performing. Yeah. This is uh, this is also Bobby Jones, you think? Yes, it's Bobby Jones. And, and, and this is your whole group. This is the rest of the guys now, there. The Joy Boys is a group. That's the name of the group? Yes. Yes, okay. it's the group. So it's Donnie and Daryl and the Joy Boys. And the Joy yes. Boys. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. And we got an anniversary cover there. Yeah, this, nice. was, this was our anniversary. And uh, Daryl, you're doing something here. <laughs> Where did you find that one there? <laughs> <laughs> that was Riding in Virginia as well. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, who is this? Tammy Edwards of the uh, Edwards yeah. sister. Yeah, North okay. Carolina. And this next one? That Christian Angels. Christian Angels. Yeah, that's Stella Christian. 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 God, it's a Christian Angels. Mm -hmm. Right. Okay. Right, right, right. We just have a habit of never, never. Now, this is strangers. what I'm going to look like if I was a lot shorter. It's <laughs> <laughs> Baby Hulk. Yeah, Baby Hulk. <laughs> yeah, when people see that, I always tell them I'm, I'm really supposed to be six foot tall, but I was mashed together. Yeah, <laughs> this, this kind of shows your, your stature. Yeah, yeah. I wanted yeah. to see how I failed to be tall. <laughs> now, that's the next one here. Now, now, there's a story behind this. Tell me about this. Yeah, this, this young lady here, we were in Virginia. No, we were in North Carolina. North Carolina, and um, her parents bought her to the concert, right? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, she had a dreaded fear of small statured people and when she met us she was basically in tears and she was she was like she was trembling afraid to yeah. touch us yeah so um she faced the fears and and uh 
she was so happy. I didn't think she was going to let me go after she. After me. <laughs> I said, said, okay, you're, you're cutting off the circulation now. You can let go. <laughs> In the late 1970s, Randy Newman, your buddy, mm -hmm. I know Randy. had a song, mm -hmm. Short People. Mm -hmm. He said in the song, short people have no reason to live. Mm -hmm. What do you think about that? Well, God bless Randy. <laughs> I, really, I really do. You know, traveling up and down the highways and byways for 35 years, we meet all kinds of people. And I always tell people that I'm so glad that God didn't put a stipulation on how tall you had to be to give him praise. Uh, you know, I, I, can I get an amen in here? Yeah. You know, um, and it, 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 it's kind of amazing, you know, after people meet you, they seem to think, okay, you're, you're, you're just like everybody else, but you're just short. And I'm like, duh. <laughs> so glad you figured that out. <laughs> But one of you is a little more sensitive to that than the other. Yeah, that, 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 would, that would be me, you know, yeah. that would be me. But Daryl, you, your view of your stature? I, I have no problem with it. I, long as he's okay, if they don't say the wrong word to make him offensive, then, you know, and I'm okay. I'm okay, because yeah. it is what it is. There, there, there's certain things that you just don't do to short people. You know, you don't pat them on the head. Right. That's, that's kind of a no-no. And you don't, you don't kind of use the M word. Yeah. So that's kind of, that's, that's very offensive to short people. I, um, Tell me some stories growing up. You've had some different looks from people, I'm sure, when you go into a store, or oh, maybe God. Oh, God. police. Or, oh, yes. God. I remember when we, when we first started started driving cars, uh, <laughs> we were driving down the street and the police pulled us over. And we're like, what did we do? I know we weren't speeding, we didn't run a red light. So he pulled us over and he said, you know, he said, I, I gotta be honest, we, we thought the car was driving by itself. <laughs> but, so I guess I guess the word kind of got a, got around got to the rest yeah. of the police department. So every time we would see one, they would be like, "Hey, right. <laughs> that's that's not in there." Well, there was the one time when one pulled me over and he said, "Man, I thought you had done stole your dad's or mom's car or something." You know, I'm <laughs> no, then you he saw all the hair on my face. He no, no, okay. <laughs> you should play some tricks riding the bus. Tell tell me about that story. <laughs> we would. My brother, we got an older brother who's, who's of, of, of average size, what, whatever that is, you know. And, uh, Six foot two. Right, 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 <laughs> right, right. right. <laughs> so he would, he would, we would ride the bus, but back then we were a, a little shorter than we are now. And to, to get out of paying the bus fare, he would say, just give me your hand and walk. So we would get on the bus like we were like real little kids. Right. And the, the bus driver just he just let us go on and say, Hey, that that's neat. I got so some ice growing, cream. Growing that, facial hair. Right. Then right. The facial hair came and he said, Oh no, not at all. Oh no. no. <laughs> now being short of stature is a major part of your music though, isn't it? It's a major draw. Yes. Um, you know, people they they used to at one time call us the eighth and ninth wonder of the world. Um they, they come out to see if it's really true. You know, I mean, those little guys, they, are they really that short? Are they, are they really gospel singers? Yeah, uh, I'm like Donnie, well, duh. Yeah, you know. yeah, until they hear the voices. And they're like, all of that came out of those little frames. I Big see, things yeah. come in small packages. Yes, yeah. yeah. And we're going to show a clip of some of that. It's called Stand Tall in the Lord, mm -hmm. one of your songs. Let's play that, Will. I always wanted to know how it felt to be able to look down on somebody. <laughs> it's so easy come here, for us to get lost in a crowd. And if we want to be heard sometimes, sometimes we have to shout it out loud when no one wants to hear us sing. And it seems we're being ignored. I stand on the shoulders of Jesus. Stand tall in the Lord. Now this problem is not just for us. 
Sometimes they can be too large But we stop by tonight to tell you That it's just right for God I can only tell you what we would do We would get on a one accord We will stand on the promises of Jesus We will stand tall in the Lord I can remember back in Back in school, all of them, all of the, the girls in school, first thing they say is, I want a tall, dark, and handsome man. Well, I said, two out of three ain't bad. Is that? A <laughs> With me, you get everything except the hair. <laughs> You've, you've, uh, we're part of a documentary, a TV documentary, about uh, people of a short stature. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, the, the National Geographics, they came and they wanted to do a documentary about small statured people. And while we were doing the documentary, I learned that in certain areas of the country, short people are cast aside. They are put in their own area away from society and considered misfits uh, because they don't they they are looked at as not being able to function in society hmm. so um kind of like leprosy right right, right. exactly yeah, wow. yeah yeah so that was that was an invention itself what uh, advice do you have for people who are suffering from some inferiority whether it's not saying short of stature is inferiority, but they, they're suffering from something. They may be shy. They may uh, have well, some other problem in their life, struggle. My advice would be to uh, tell them what God made was good and very good. He didn't make no junk. I might not be like you. You might not be like me. But God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That we all have a right to, to this freedom and to the tree of life. You've had a uh, situation when you were traveling, I think, when uh, you credited that God was watching over you. Will, you play that video? I remember one time, that it sticks out in my mind, we were coming out of Mississippi one night, one Sunday night, and I was following the van that night in my car, and all of a sudden, I saw the van start reeling and rocking and going from one side to the next. Then, all of a sudden, the entire back wheel just shot off the van. And at that point, all I saw was sparks flying where the axle was dragging and the van was going on from one side of the road to the next, from one side to the other. Luckily, and by the grace of God, there was no other cars on the road that night. And whoever was driving that van had to have help from the master above because at the speed that that van was going on, it should have went down into a ravine. It should have went off the road, but we really had a co-pilot that night. And thank God no one was hurt and everybody got out safe and, and, and with no injuries. So that kind of sticks out in my head about the grace and the mercy of God when he's got his hands over you and protected you. The world can't do you any harm. I feel like God has been with you over the years. Oh, I know he has. I yeah. know he has because we've been in situations to where I know without a shadow of a doubt that it had to be God's hands of mercy watching over, over us. We, we should have been gone. We, we should have been gone. But angels of mercy, when, we, when you're doing God's will and you're doing it from your heart, he's with you. That particular night, I was the driver. You were the driver. Of the van and... Um, like he said, you could see the sparks. You weren't drunk, were you? <laughs> no, no, I wasn't. <laughs> um, but the first thing came to mind was uh, we had just filled up the van full of gas, and I didn't know how close that gas tank was to the ground uh -huh. from, drive, you know, from dragging. Uh -huh. And I knew we had lost a wheel, and it, it was kind of like driving on snow. You know, when you go one way, you got to correct and go that way. And it... 
took me a minute, and the uh, only thing I could think of, we had some of our kids in the van mm -hmm. with us, and we did. We did. as soon as I got it close enough off the side, I was like, everybody get out, and we was, because I didn't know if it was going to blow or what, because we had just filled it, filled the tank up completely. Gas and sparks don't mix. What have people said to you over the years that have attended your concerts? Are they appreciative of bringing a uh, spiritual message into their life, uplifting them? Have they come up to you afterwards and said oh, anything yeah. or what? I see several come to the stage even when you're singing. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. It, and, and it seems to happen a lot when we're, we, we're at our lowest because there are trials and tribulations. It's, it's, it's more than just a notion to travel for 35 years. Every day has not been Sunday. Every day has not been good. Um, band members have come. They've gone. Um, but uh, just when we seem to be at our wit's end and we just can't go on anymore, fans will come and say, I was blessed by your ministry. Please don't stop. Whatever you do, keep carrying the word. You guys don't realize how much of a blessing that you are to me. I've, I've been wrestling with something all week, and you guys have just given me renewed strength and just let me know that, that I can make it. You have... Uh been a blessing to a little girl. Yes, yes. The Tell little, me about that. The little girl. First of all, I, I want to give some credit to, to my, my wife. She's back there in the back. Val, wave your hand. She's, she's back there in the back taking everything. Yeah. See how tall she is. <laughs> I think, I, think, I, think I, I fell in love with her legs first. And then I said, oh, oh there, there you are. There you are. There you are. So, <laughs> Elizabeth, that's, that's, that's Miss Elizabeth. Val works, works at a mental health uh, uh, institution where she counsels drug-addicted mothers uh, that come in that, that have drug problems. And she met a young lady there, and she was pregnant with Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth was born, she was still going through, having problems, kicking that drug habit. And Elizabeth was born Well, we started babysitting. Started off on Friday and Saturday. Friday and Saturday turned to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Turned to Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. <laughs> so um, while she was still trying to get her, her life together and get on track, uh, we approached her and just asked if we could, we could adopt her because we felt like she would be in, in safer hands and in, 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 in with our care. And we went through the proper channels and legally adopted her. So Elizabeth is a part of our family now. And I'm, I'm 50 years old and I'm 53 years old and I said, what have I got myself into? <laughs> <laughs> have another shot of Elizabeth. Yeah, there you go. That's, that's Elizabeth, so, yeah. What's the future for the Joe Boys? Have you done everything you've wanted to do? Is there something out there yet? Like, make big money? <laughs> that would be or have good. you made big money already? That would, that would be, that, that would, would be, be good. that would be yeah. good. We made little money. <laughs> we haven't <laughs> sung here yet. Yeah, so yeah. that's on our, that's our next, next goal. <laughs> but uh, we just want to continue to travel and to bless people and, uh, Hopefully win a Grammy. Uh, that would be good. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> one of your biggest fans, Steve Smith, is one of our elders here. He's going to lead the prayer at the very end of our interviews okay. after the next interview. Okay. But uh, he likes the song, Too Blessed to be Stressed. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> okay. We can't play all of it because it's an eight-minute song. <laughs> but we can play a couple minutes of this, and while we do that, we'll have Mr. Gooch come up here for the next interview. Thank you guys okay. for being with us. Thank you. 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 I'm too blessed to be stressed. Can I get a sanctified witness to know that God is already working it out? So I don't have no reason to be stressed because I'm blessed. Yes, I am. 
Yes, he has. He's opened up so many doors that I We got to get out of here tonight. And our next guest is William Gooch. But before we meet him, watch this video of you. Hey, we're Durant. And this holiday season, we thought we'd take you with us on our Christmas caroling adventure. Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I think they liked it. Mr. Gooch. They love you. They love you here. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being with us. Absolutely. How low? How low can you go? How low? How low? <laughs> well. I can actually go pretty low. But then I can talk really, really high, so there you go. <laughs> you pr probably don't remember, because you're much younger than me. 
some of you are much older and, and can remember, Larry Hooper. I, I wanted to be two things in life, six foot ten. I wanted to duck the basketball easily, and I wanted to have a deep voice. I didn't accomplish quite either one. I got halfway there. <laughs> but, uh, I was about to say, your voice is actually pretty. Larry, Larry Hooper could really sing low on the Lawrence Welk Show. Have you mm. seen the Lawrence Welk Show before? Once. That's one of your favorite shows. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, he was a great singer. He could sing uh, Grandfather Clock is one of the songs he sang. Mm. Really, really deep. Well, no, no. But you're the bass singer for the contemporary Christian group, Durant. I am. And that you've been with that group how long? I've been with that group for nearly six years now. Started in October 2002. But it was not Durant before it was Durant. It was what? It was so many other groups. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> really? Um, <laughs> um, it was the Candlelights, which um, there's an audience member here who knows a little something about that. Um, then it was the Nashville Youth Chorus, which is really where I kind of got my beginnings when I was about 13 years What about old. Exchange? I was not in Exchange. Oh, you were not? I was not. But that was the early in incarnation of yes. the group. Okay. Yes. Yeah, they, um, Exchange started, I think, around 2003. I didn't come in until 2010. You know where the name came from, Durant? I do. Um, the name Durant actually comes from Durant LaRue Lancaster, who is Melissa and, incidentally, Anthony's grandfather. There you go. So. Interesting. I was told that you have perfect pitch. Oh, okay. Here we go. <laughs> Hang on here, just a minute, just a minute. No pressure, by Stand the way. Stand by. Let's see. Okay. That was a C scale. What is that note? That's a G. Wait a minute. C, D, E, F, G. Okay, it is. <laughs> All right. Now, what is this one here? That would be an A flat or a G sharp. Okay. And this one... Uh, that's an F. C, D, E, F. That's right. Wow. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. How did you, how did you get that ability? Um, born with it? How, how do you? Definitely not born with it. No. Um, I actually learned it in high school. I played percussion, and I had to learn how to tune the timpani drum, which is what I played my junior and senior year. But there was nothing to tune it with, so I had to learn the pitches in my head. Wow. We kind of you know, titled this interview uh, when, we, when we met together for lunch before this, uh, From the Pain of Losing Your Parents to the Ministry of Music. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about your background a little bit. Where, okay. Where'd you come from? Tell me about your family. All right. I was born in Jackson, Mississippi, um, 1983. I'm 33 years old. Um, single? Single. And looking. Um, <laughs> Are you looking at Donnie when you said that? <laughs> No, oh, okay. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> um, I was, no, no. Oh, my goodness. Anyway, um, I was born in Jackson, Mississippi, came up to Nashville when I was roughly about a year old. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really have a choice in that matter. You just kind of go where your parents go. Mm -hmm. um, the reason that we came up was because of prison ministry. My dad was in prison ministry um, in, in many, many places, and particularly... He has a little bit of history, I think, in this church. Mm -hmm. so. Your mother passed away? My mother passed away when I was 13 years old, um, just before the end of my seventh grade year. And your father? What and was your relationship father. there with your father over the years? Um, started well. It deteriorated over time. Um, there, was, there was just some alcoholism and some infidelity issues that started to creep up when I guess when I was about maybe 11 years old. How did you deal with that? Did you? For a while, I didn't, because I didn't know how to process that. Yeah. Um, over time, though, I've been, you know, able to pray and actually, you know, talk some of these things out. And Did you internalize a lot? I did. Yeah. I did. Um, by nature, I guess I'm a quiet person until you get to know me, then... All bets are off. Um, but by nature, I'm a quiet person, so I internalize a lot. I think constantly. So. You speak 
uh, your voice sounds higher than when you sing. Is that on purpose? It is on purpose because if I spoke low all the time, I don't think that people would be able to understand me. I mean, it, especially in a crowd. It, especially in a crowd. Yeah. So, you know, I have to keep my voice up here instead of going down here. It, does, it just doesn't work. So yeah. I keep it up just so. I was told you can sing under the piano by uh, Anthony. That doesn't mean you're under the piano singing. <laughs> but but you, can, you can actually sing under the piano with a, your, your voice can go lower than the lowest on, key. On the best days when I'm warmed up and everything is good, I can reach the bottom of the piano. Wow. So what range do you have then? What, what is it? I don't know nothing about music. I'm, I'm, I'm grasping here for, <laughs> for, for, for terms to use. So okay. what is the, the octave range or whatever it is? What is the range? Um, I have about a, well, when you add that in, it's about a four octave range. Four octave range. Is that good? It's pretty good. Pretty good. Okay. All right. That's good. Okay. All right. Um, your family seemed to be, they weren't around for you as, as, as many situations, many families are, are not around. Uh, I think Durant has become your family. Would you say Very that? Very much so. Let's Very see, let's see, so. we have a shot here of uh, we have a Tennessee Baptist Children's Home, of you singing as a group? Oh yeah. You, just look, you look happy together. Yes, yes, we are very much a family and uh, we just enjoy each other's company. You, you travel around, you have traveled around the world. Almost. Yes, yes, been around the world. Um, that video, Colorblind, we were in Africa um, when we um, were doing that, and that was a very fun and eye-opening experience. How so? If I had to, if I had to um, internalize it and think about it, I would say you really don't know how blessed you are mm -hmm. just being in the U.S. When you go over there, you see nothing but abject poverty in a way that is unexplainable when people literally have nothing. And we went there and we gave them toothbrushes and, you know, toothpaste. And for some of them, that's the first thing they've ever owned. So it's it just it's mind-blowing. So. so you're very well accepted. We were very well accepted, and the kids took a liking to me. Uh, I guess because of my low voice, because it's not necessarily anything that they see over there. Did you teach them a lot of that? What, what is that called with the mouth sounds where you just sound like Oh, that? Uh, what is that? The beatboxing, or... Do a little know. bit of that for us. Okay. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> you sang here uh, last Thanksgiving, uh, on thanks singing, can yes. you identify the people in this group here? Okay. And is, and is this your regular group? Does it change or what? It changes um, from time to time, but if I went from this side to the other side, there's Julie Tracy, Melissa Lancaster, which is Anthony's brother and the director of the group. <coughs> <coughs> Anthony's sister. <laughs> what am I doing? <coughs> I'm sorry, Anthony's sister. <laughs> um, <laughs> Well, I'll just embarrass myself. Um, Amber McElroy, um, and then Stephanie Harding, Kim Lancaster, myself, and Alan Brantley on the end. All right. And this remains pretty constant, this group? Has it changed? It changes just depending on, you know, time and circumstances and whether everybody can get there. So. You went to London in 2015, was it last? 2015, yes. We have a clip of... Uh, of you singing over there, I believe, and uh, Do you really? within this clip, you're getting, you, you not, not only electrified the United Kingdom, it looked like you were like electrified. So let's, huh? let's, let's yeah. play that. I've been around the world, I've seen a lot of faces. I met some beautiful people, I've been a whole million familiar faces. I've stood the best ah! in the scene, I've the plays in the have to do until I finally reach the day when I can hear God sing with a voice like thundering. Now I want to feast my ears on the smooth and melatonin. This is a letter that uh, was sent evidently to Durant from a fan, and uh, let me read that. 
to Durant. This is August 22nd, 2015. Thanks for singing songs and teaching us songs. A lot of ex ex exclamation points in here. You are great. Even the word cannot express how magnificent you are. I'm not sure how they spelled that, but the video of Savior King was so great, and since, you, since last year I have been listening to you on YouTube. You are amazing, and don't stop letting your bright light shine. That's from a, uh, a uh, viewer and a listener in Stratford Church of Christ. Yep, that's in London. Yep. That's in London. Mm -hmm. That makes, uh, surely makes you feel good to it get does. stuff like that. It does. That uh, to realize you're touching people. Do you feel like you're touching people when you're up there on the stage singing? Or do you feel it afterwards when they come up? Or? I feel it more so afterwards. Um, when I'm in, on the stage, I'm just mainly concerned about praising God at that time and um, letting my light shine. Um, afterwards, you know, that's just, it just is what it is, I guess. I said earlier that you, uh, you look happy with the group. And you look happy anyhow. I don't have a happy face. You have a happy face. <laughs> You have a happy face. <laughs> and there's a video here of you and some bumper cars. It looks like you're having a happy time here. <laughs> On the road, do you have any conflicts with people? With, 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 with the group? being together all the time? And do you take it out maybe when you play bumper cars? <laughs> <laughs> I don't take it out when I'm playing bumper cars. Um, no, I, I tend to be the laid back person and um, I just take things as they come. If you've noticed there, I'm, I work around mainly women. Yeah, I noticed that. So, <laughs> well, why is it's, that? <laughs> it's, it's, it's best to stay calm, cool, and calm. <laughs> It's just safety for everyone. You, you, you were the only male in the group that went to, to London and you UK? Yes. Yes, I was the only one. So did, how does that work in singing various parts with the only... You sang tenor and bass? or Well, I mainly sing bass, and we actually had um, Julie Tracy, who used to be a member here. She was the person that sung tenor, and she was very good at it. Wow. Interesting. Have you done everything you want to do? No. What would you like to do in life? Um, I would love to be able to hit all of the continents, um, being able to share my gift um, in, on all continents. So, you know, Brazil is a place that I would love to go. I'd love to go to Australia, um, Japan one of these days. I'm not too sure how that's going to work. Put me in Antarctica. I don't care. <laughs> Just any place that I'm able to share. And if Anthony Lancaster struck by a bus tomorrow, for some reason. Would you like to have his job? Wow, I hope he's not struck by a bus. But I'm not wishing that on him. No, no, no. I'm not no. wishing that. I'm just saying, would that be something you would enjoy doing? Yes, yes. I would, I would love to be able to, um, to minister just to a specific church okay. um, and be able to do that full-time worship leading. So. And what one thing... Uh, how, how, has God, how has God worked in your life? Is there one thing that you can point to to say, you know, God had a hand on this? Maybe it was the talent of, of the singing, or maybe it was something in the past growing up. Is there, is there one thing you can say, yeah, God had a hand in this. I couldn't have done this without God's help. Or maybe not. I'll put you on the spot, perhaps. Hmm, okay. Um, I really think that God had a hand on me um, just with beginning my singing career. Um, when did you was, know that you could sing? Was that where, back when you were four it, years old? No, oh, no, 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 no. I didn't start singing until I was 13 years old and I was actually propelled by my mother's death. Um, I, I had to do something to, you know, quote unquote, distract myself. Uh -huh. um, so what I did was um, I got dropped off at Strader Lane Church of Christ and the National Youth Course was there, and they practiced every week. And so I slowly but surely became a part of them. Um, and that's kind of, it just kind of melded together. And I ha I've been singing now for 20 years, and I haven't been able to let go of it. Tell us about being homeless for a while. I was homeless for not too long of a period. Um, I slept in my car. 
Um, I slept in the church that I was attending at that time. I don't think anybody really knew I was doing that. Um, really? But I was, I happened to be the person that was the worship leader there at that time. And so I just slept on the floor in the church. Were you not getting paid enough? Or no, I, I, it was very much a volunteer really? type thing. So I wasn't being paid anything, but I did. How do you keep going in a situation like that? Just one day at a time, or what? Definitely one day at a time, and um, you just realize that trouble don't last always, if, if I had to say it. Um, you eventually know that, okay, it's not going to be like this forever. You don't know how that's going to work, but you know that it's not going to last, and you're going to be able to get through it. Your objective is just to stick with it. You stick with it, you'll be okay. Wow. You're going to close out, I think, our interview with a song, a live song. A live we'll sing song. live mm -hmm. to a track. Yes. <laughs> See, I know nothing about music. So I'm going to get off the stage and let you do that. Okay. And uh, then I come back up right after that. The song is called what? Testimony. All right. And I think it's actually a pretty fitting song for, you know, what I've dealt with, what the Joys, Joy Boys have dealt with. I think everybody has a testimony, and if, if they tell it, they'll be able to bless people. All right. Mike is yours, and the stage is yours. All right. To everyone. Hopeless situations. Mm -hmm. The angels? Because, see, you're redeemed. We go. you've been through. If you did it to me, you did it to you. One more. He's working it out. Over the door. So if you know this is true,
one more. He's working things out. Over the doors and making ways. Yes, he is. So if you know this is true, yeah. William Gooch, thank you very much, thank you. Let's have the Joy Boys up here. Thank you for all being with us, it's great. What a great evening. See if he would lead us in a prayer, and we'll, uh, we'll shortly be dismissed. Hog and fine. Sovereign Jehovah, it's in the indisputable name of Jesus that we come before you tonight. Father, we come thanking you for a time of worship a time of unity, a time of peace. Father, I give you praise for Donnie and Daryl and the Joy Boys because, Father, in such trying times, we need to be reminded that we are too blessed to be stressed by any negative test. And, Father, we give you praise for them and for my brother and my friend, William Gooch. Father, you've brought him a mighty long way and Father, I ask that you continue to bless them and anoint each and every one of them. And for this kingdom man, Larry Souter, bless him. Thank you for Souter Productions. Thank you for using him to tell the world the good news and the many stories of your amazing grace. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with us next month. Dick Brackett. Nashville's former Bozo the Clown will be here. Thank you for being with us tonight.